Yes, it's Thursday. Time for a new Parsha. End of Sefer Bereshit. Do you have a few minutes? Yeah, I would love to check. Parsha Vayechi, the end of Sefer Bereshit. And as we famously know, in this Parsha, Yaakov gives the brachas, gives his blessings to all his children. And just before Yaakov gives his bracha to all his children, he calls over Yosef with his two children to give them a bracha too. And the Torah tells us in great detail how Yosef places the older son on Yaakov's right side and the younger son Ephraim on Yaakov's left side so that Yaakov will put his left hand on the younger one and his right hand on top of the older one. Yet the Torah tells us then that Yaakov crosses his hand and puts his right hand on top of Ephraim, the younger one, and Yosef doesn't like it. He tries to push Yaakov's hand. And Yaakov tells him, I know Yosef, it's fine. I know that Ephraim is the younger one, but he will be greater than Menashe. And then the Torah continues on to say how Yaakov gives his bracha and adds to that that again, Yaakov put Ephraim before Menashe. And when we see this in the Torah, two great questions come to mind. First of all, this is not the first time Yaakov puts Ephraim before Menashe. If we go back just a few psukim before that, already then, Yaakov tells Yosef that two of his sons will be just like Reuven and Shimon. And who does he compare to Reuven? Ephraim. He says, Ephraim Reuven Shimon liyu. Already back then, Yaakov put Ephraim before Menashe. But even more so, the greater question here is, why is it so important for Yaakov to put Ephraim before Menashe? Why is Yaakov making such a big issue about putting Ephraim before Menashe? What is the deal about having Ephraim first before Menashe? This is very interesting because the amount of detail about this story and this argument is very many psukim. Keeps showing that Yosef wants this, Yaakov wants this. What actually is is this battle almost between them, between these two sides, Ephraim first or Menashe first? Why does it matter so much? So there's obviously something deeper going on here. Yaakov is constantly insisting on Ephraim before Menashe and Yosef, every time we see, he gives Menashe first the name. When he brings them to Yaakov, it's first Menashe. Something here is going on and there's something deeper that the Torah is teaching us and that Yaakov maybe is trying to teach Yosef. When we look at the meaning of these names, why why does Yosef first give the name Menashe and then give the name Ephraim? What does the name Menashe mean? What does the name Ephraim mean? Menashe is Nashani Elokim et kol amalive et kol beitavi, which is probably some sort of Hashem returning everything I went through, all my efforts, all my suffering, as we know, this is some sort of payment that Hashem is giving me, versus Ephraim, which is Hifrani Hashem be'eretz oni, that Hashem continues to give me blessing. Hifrani is like the word pre, like the word fruit. I continue to see fruits of what I do. I continue to see blessings in what I do. So we see one is referring to my suffering or a correction of my suffering. I suffered so much. I so much effort, so much pain and Hashem corrects that. And the other one is talking about maybe the everyday blessings that I'm continuing to receive from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And Yosef sees this simply. The first thing is I was in trouble. Hashem pulled me out. And the second thing is I continue to appreciate the blessings that Hashem gives me. The Sfat Emet here teaches that Yaakov seems to be responding to Yosef and saying it doesn't always work in that order. Sometimes you need to swap this order because he explains there are two concepts. There's Geula and there's Parnasa. Geula is when you're in trouble and Hashem redeems you. Whether it's Am Yisrael being in trouble in exile and being redeemed or whether it's everyone in their everyday life, whether it's physical or spiritual, you have trouble and you're redeemed. That's the concept of Geula. But then there's the concept of parnasa. Parnasa, he says, is not because you're in trouble. Just because every day Hashem is there to give you what to eat, to give you what's needed. It's constantly positive, not because there was a negative, just because it is, because Hashem is always there for you, constantly feeding you, constantly giving you what you need spiritually and physically. And the Sfat Emet goes on to say that this is similar to the Pasuk Sumera Vasetov. We have two concepts, moving away from bad, Sumera, and then Vasetov, and then do good. First, you need to stop the terrible things you're doing before you start going ahead and doing good things. And this is how Yosef sees the world. And there's some truth to that. Sometimes that's really the way you can't be focused on doing good if you haven't left the bad things you're doing yet. But Yaakov's teaching him a lesson. Not always can you wait for someone to leave the bad places in because sometimes he has no way of leaving it. He needs a rope to hold on to. He needs something positive to pull him out of where he is, of the darkness that he's in. And this is why sometimes you have to swap the order. Even if he's still deep in the mud, even 
even if he's still in the darkness, give him something good to do. Let him focus not on getting out of his trouble. Let him focus on the everyday of doing good. That itself will give him the strength to pull him out of the bad. Aset tov, and then sur mirah, that'll give you the strength to leave the bad things. So based on this, this is what's actually happening here. Yosef first gives the name Menashe, only then gives the name Ephraim. First brings Menashe, here I came out of my troubles, and then talks about the further blessing. And Yaakov says, that's great. Redemption, coming out of troubles is great. But the key to getting out of your troubles is focusing on that everyday blessings. When you're able to focus first on those everyday blessings, they happen all the time, even in the darkness, that will give you strength to step out of the darkness. And that's why Ephraim will come by Yaakov before Menashe. Beautiful. And I think we can see it in other places in Yaakov's life. If we go all the way back to the beginning of Pashat Vayetza, when he's just leaving his home, in the beginning of his journey, where he says, will go with me throughout the entire way, but will also save me, guard me at hard times. And jumping back to our Parsha at the end of his life, where he gives the bracha to Ephraim and Hashem, and Hamalach HaGoeloti, like the Midrash that the Sfas says, compares these two aspects of HaKadosh Baruch Hu being my shepherd, my day-to-day -day shepherd, who's guiding me on my day-to-day -day life. But also, he was always there to save me when I needed redemption, when I needed Geula, when I needed help out of a bad situation, out of a tzara that Yaakov was in. And like we see in Parshat Vayetzu, where Yaakov goes into detail, he says, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will give me bread to eat close to where, and then he will also get me back safe to my home. Again, the two aspects of the day-to-day -day life of HaKadosh Baruch Hu being his shepherd on the day-to-day -day life and the aspect of HaKadosh Baruch Hu saving him and bringing him back safe to his home. And like you were saying, when we think about our day-to-day -day life, sometimes it's very easy to say, just let me get out of this situation and then I will be able to do X, Y, Z. Or like the Mishnah and Abba says in a different way, you can't always hold out for that time when you will have time or for that time when things will be calm and quiet and you will have peace of mind that will enable you to do things. Life doesn't work, first of all, with Menashe and then Ephraim. First of all, with repaying the bad things and only then I can build and add more things. Says Yaakov, life is both of them together. You got to continue building. You got to continue doing. You got to continue adding. Even in dark times, even when you are not repaid yet for the suffering you had. It's not an order of things of falling down to the pit and then getting out of the pit and only after that building and doing other things. No, Yaakov is teaching Yosef, you were in the pit. You know what it means to be down there. But even when you were down there, don't forget you continue to build, you continue to do, you continue to create, you continue to pay attention to the people around you and to help the people around you. And also after that, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will take you out of your problems. HaKadosh Baruch Hu will take you out of your trouble. But also until he does, continue trying to walk your path where you are right now. Don't sit and whine or cry about what's going on around you and wait for that savior to happen. And only after that, you will be able to walk. No, you continue walking, you continue building, even in time of distress, even in times of trouble. And Bezat Hashem HaKadosh Baruch Hu will take you out of that. But always don't forget that Ephraim is always there together with Menashe. This very much fits to how Chazal see Yaakov when they describe our forefathers as establishing our three tefillot. Avram Avinu doing Shachri, that we daven in the morning. Yitzchak doing the afternoon prayers, Mincha. And Yaakov, the night prayers. Yaakov represents the one who deals with the dark times, with exile. He spends a lot of his life in exile, first by Lavan, then in Egypt. He's the one who's preparing us also for the exile that Am Yisrael is going into. He's the one who gives us the strength how to deal with dark times. And that's what he's teaching us here. As you were saying beautifully, if you sit in those dark times and just wait to get out of there, and until then just sit and wait, we know how long these dark times last. You can't just sit and wait. You need to see what you can do in those times. Put Ephraim first. Focus on the day-to-day. -day. Focus on the day-to-day -day blessings, not only the big things that are lacking, and we miss very big, great things that we hope for, but appreciate and focus on those day-to-day -day blessings. They will give you the strength to really climb out of the dark times and to be able to reach a full redemption of both Ephraim and Menashe. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Shkoyach. Abad shalom. Shkoyach to you. Good Shabbos. And we'll talk again next week. More Talking Torah videos on different topics. Check out our YouTube channel.